Welcome to Snack Time with Michael Hurst. I am Michael Hurst. So glad you guys were are all here. Um, that was the theme song to uh, the Curious Constructions album. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a musician and author, and uh, I'm a big fan of unusual, unusual musical instruments and also curious, unusual, and extraordinary books. Um, however, like many of you, I am uh, somewhat stuck in quarantine, but I have my books with me and I have some musical instruments with me and uh, it seemed like um, maybe I could do something to help us all get through this unusual situation together. Uh, so I'm here every Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. doing a different topic. Some, uh, most of them are from, from my books, but I also might uh, do some ice cream truck music and who knows, if you guys have ideas, put them in the comments. Um, so for today's episode, we are going to look at Curious Constructions. Take that down. Curious Constructions is the most recent book of my series. Um, I actually have a fourth book that's on the way. It's supposed to be uh, sent off to be in print and coming out this fall. We'll see if that actually happens. I hope so. Uh, and I've written songs for that. But this is uh, the most recent one that is out, Curious Constructions. About 50 of what I think are some of the coolest structures on the planet. Um, maybe even some not on the planet. And I thought for uh, this particular episode, I would focus on one that's fairly near and dear to me. It's even on the cover, and that's the Coney Island Parachute Jump. Any of you guys ever seen this before? I know those of you who live in Brooklyn have seen it, and that's why it's near and dear to me, because I am from Brooklyn. Um, I'm actually currently in Ridgefield, Connecticut, where I uh, am taking some shelter. But uh, when I first moved to Brooklyn, I saw this structure and thought, what in the world is that? Um, currently, it does not have parachutes hanging from it. It's just the big red tower. And uh, the more I learned about it, the more I was fascinated and decided I had to write about it. So I was really happy that it made it to the cover of the book. So I am going to read this entry from, from it. You guys all hear me all right? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. That will help if you can find the thumbs up. Give myself a little space here. Tight squeeze. All right. So the Coney Island parachute jump. Here we go. Located in Brooklyn, New York. Paris has its Eiffel Tower. Pisa has its Leaning Tower. Brooklyn has its defunct parachute jump. Originally built for the 1939 New York World's Fair in Flushing Meadows Park, Queens, this former amusement ride was relocated to Brooklyn's Coney Island in 1941, where it became part of Steeplechase Park. For a mere 40 cents, just 25 cents for kids, you could sit in a canvas seat and get hoisted by a cable to the top of this 250-foot tower. After a half second of taking in the view... The cable would release, and you'd parachute down along several guide wires. Woo! So you were tethered to a rope as you went down. You didn't just float off into the ocean. Uh, retired Navy Commander James H. Strong designed an early version of the parachute jump as a means of training military paratroopers. But when crowds started to gather to watch, James saw the dollar signs and decided to modify the parachute jump into an amusement ride. Isn't that cool? It started off as just some guy's idea for military training and uh, everybody wanted to do it though. So he's like, hmm, maybe I should make this a ride. Um, the ride stayed active for 25 years until Steeplechase Park closed its gates in 1964. Although the rest of the park was demolished, it was decided that the open frame steel structure of the parachute jump was too expensive to tear down. So it was simply left to rust. In 1989, however, the tower was granted landmark status by the city of New York and soon thereafter received a new paint job and fancy blinking lights. Today, you can buy a t-shirt from just about any Brooklyn tourist shop. Yes, they actually exist now. Uh, with a screen printed image of this non-operational amusement ride. So that's the backstory in the parachute jump. I love that it started as this, this military thing and went to the World's Fair and then was relocated to Coney Island. Shoot, where's the shoot? Recently, there has been talk of bringing the ride back to life. Unfortunately, modern safety standards would likely keep that from happening. I, I suppose instead you'll just have to parachute from an airplane. Uh, I don't recommend that, but uh, yes. 
the irony of that. Um, I sometimes have little poems I add to my entries, and here I have one called Ode to the Parachute Jump. What could be more poetic than an amusement ride of yore? People from across America driving to the Brooklyn shore to get the thrill of their lives, making their parachute jumps while the ones below got their thrills looking up at the people's rumps. Yuck, yuck. Okay, so this is, uh, very proud of this title. Safety second, everybody. Despite riders being buckled in by only a small leather harness, during its time in operation, the parachute jump had a perfect safety record. People are often asking me, did anybody die on this thing? Actually, no, it had a perfect safety record. Um, but yeah, people, uh, occasionally a cable would get caught, leaving someone suspended for a few hours. But that's about the worst of it. The same cannot be said for the Coney Island's 90-year-old cyclone roller coaster, which has seen at least two fatalities and countless injuries. In fact, I still have a headache from the time I wrote it five years ago. That's uh, not entirely true, but yes, it did give me a headache. Um, but I'm glad it's there. Okay, so I have a song. I've written a song about the Coney Island parachute jump, and uh, I play it live with my band, but I uh, have never played it solo. And I am going to attempt it now. Let's make sure this guitar is nice and tuned. <clears throat> Ooh, five thumbs up. Thank you, guys. La -di -da, uh -huh, I see you all below me from the sky. The air is clear. I have no fear. Coney Island love by. Before I get into it, I want to point out that when you rode this ride, people often took their shoes off so they wouldn't fall off during the ride. I also read that uh, a lot of sailors would hang out by the ride and pay for the ladies to ride it. A sunny day in 58, we took the BMT. The sea beach line, I'm feeling fine. I met someone just like at Steeple Chase, the funny place, a sailor paid my way. Took off my shoes, I can't refuse the parachute jump in May. Here we go. La da, aha, I see you all below me from the sky. The air is clear, I have no fear. Cody Island Lullaby The Thunderbolt The Wonder Wheel The Kitty Train Are fun We saved the best For last And then we took off In a run It's Nathan Hurst At last you held my hand We felt so grand And with a thump we rose above, we fell in love aboard the parachute jump. Here we go, everybody. la di da ha ha I see you all below me from the sky. The air is clear, I have no fear. Coney Island lullaby. la di da ha ha and down we it's time to say goodbye We'll ride again with you, my friend Cody Island Lullaby yeah, Thank you, Nathan Hurst And my wife, Kelly, who's back here hiding Stand up, Kelly, say hello Hey, look, it's Kelly Hi, everybody Thank you guys so much for tuning in I will be back tomorrow Tomorrow's episode, I think I'm going to do on the elephant shrew it's true. It's true. There's an elephant shrew. So if you have any questions about the elephant shrew, please put them in my comments, any of the platforms that this is being shown on. Uh, big thanks to Jason Bittner and Dan Miller, my producers. Uh, and of course, to Kelly and Nathan and to Julian and Julie Landau for letting us stay in their house in Ridgefield, Connecticut. This has been a, a big, huge saver. It's, we've got space. We can hike. So thank you guys so much. Um, see you all tomorrow. Big love.